Hey, welcome one and all. We are back. Another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. He's Big Show. Big Show, how are you? I am. I'm okay. So, I'm um, all right. Man, we got our work cut out for us this week. We'll get to the pick segment in the NFL in a minute. Um, Basically, I'm in a picks league as well. And I can tell you that I suck. This year, I suck. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have did a lot of bragging because usually I'm doing good. Uh, week one, week two is so-so for everybody, but I take off in week three and don't look back. Um, everybody has taken off from me in week three, and they're not looking back. So I've got my work cut out for me. I don't want to be one of those people that say, Hey, it's a 17 game schedule. There's a lot of football left to be played. The people that say that all the time, you'll still hear them saying that in week 16. Well, what if you over. just say it once? If I say it once right now, okay, I'm good. <laughs> but if I'm saying it in week 16 and I'm 10 games back out of first place, chances are I'm not going to make it. Yeah, probably not because everybody's <laughs> picking the same winners. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so were there any standout games in week four to you? That to me, let me yeah. go back and look at them. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I mean, besides our game where we lost Rasheed Rice. That stood out. Well, let me ask you: Do um, you think do surprising you think the team productivity go is going to go down that much because of the absence of Rice? I don't yeah, think he gonna... was. He was the NFL's leading receiver. <laughs> Nobody had double-digit catches except for Rasheed Rice in the league. But here's my thing: You got in that the kid. You got that speedy ass kid that nobody right, can but catch. right, but he doesn't know football yet. I know. Once he learns how to run a route, he's going to be dangerous. Yeah. I mean, he does. He doesn't know how to run football yet, so he's going to be a gimmick guy. Rasheed Rice was our possession uh, over the middle, strong, uh, yak yard kind of guy. Um, yeah. Full it, disclosure, it I forgot y'all had Juju still on the team. Yeah, I think he's only caught a couple catches. I mean, games that stood out, I mean, I figured that Bronco-Jets game would be better than it was. Um, that was a snooze fest. It the really Ravens-Bills game, I was surprised that it was it was that dominated by the Ravens. I would agree. Um, I had no doubt that the Titans were going to beat the Dolphins. Dolphins are cooked. They don't have a quarterback, so... I knew they were. I they didn't were realize that Tua makes that much of a difference to them. Oh yeah, you just go back to year before last when they sucked assholes through a straw. Um, let's see here. I was actually surprised how well the Panthers played the Bengals. Yeah, uh, the the Panthers made that a fight. Uh, but some of these other games, just like you know. Hats off to Washington Commanders. I mean, they're playing lights out. I like yeah, them. Yeah, they are. Um, Minnesota, yeah, they're 4-0, and but they're a weird 4-0. and They remind me of the 19 or the 2003 or 2002 Kansas City Chiefs where we went like 8 or 9-0, and but mostly it was, you know, because of Dante Hall or a strip sack or something like that. It was just fluky. I think Minnesota is going to come back to, to planet Earth eventually. Um, but, hey, you know, the, the surprising, um, you know, was that the NFC South, the Saints, the Falcons? I think the, the Saints have come back down to Earth. I'm just saying they're, they're – that whole – that whole uh, uh, division is surprising. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they're better than what everybody thought they were going to be. That is true. Now, speaking on that, um, 
I'm going to go over some teams with you. Contenders okay. or pretenders? That's what I want to know from you. And I'm not going across right. the entire league. You got to be two and two or better in order to join this conversation. If you're one and three or zero oh and four, you're not even in this conversation. And this is just through the first quarter of the uh, season. Is there is there anybody that's zero oh and four? I don't uh, think there is. No, I don't Tennessee think there are. Won last night, so I think everybody yeah, I think at least has one victory. That is true. So unfortunately, oh, no. I lied. Jaguars are zero and four. Okay, Jaguars. Well, unfortunately, the Dolphins will this year will not be entered in the conversation. All right, in the AFC East, you've got the Jets at two and two, and the Bills at three and one. Bills first, contenders or pretenders? I would say as long as Josh Allen is their quarterback, they're always a contender. Jets, they've got the great Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Contender or pretender? Big time pretender. After what I saw against the Broncos, I got to agree with you. It's almost like they didn't put up a fight. Well, it's not even just the the deal with the Broncos. I mean, the coach and, and Aaron Rodgers aren't on the same page. Um, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. AFC North, the Steelers are three and one, contenders or pretenders? Super Bowl contenders or playoff contenders? We're just going to say playoff right now. We're just going to say playoff. I would I would say they're definitely in, in the hunt, in the mix, pretender. Okay. I mean, contender. Ravens, two and two, contenders or pretenders? Contender. They're probably overall the best team in the AFC. Hmm. All right, AFC South. The Texans are three and one. Contenders or pretenders? Man, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because I have not been impressed with their games, even though they've won three of them. I'm gonna say pretender. Mm. Colts two and two. Pretenders, contenders. Oh, psh, not even in the equation. Pretender. Okay, so we have our first two and two team that's really a pretender. All right. Um, actually, the second one, the Jets. The Jets are a pretender. I don't care what anybody says. Um, AFC West. The Chiefs are four and zero. I'm going to say they're pretenders. No, I'm kidding. They are contenders. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way. Even though I'm the Raider fan, you got to be truthful. You got the crown until somebody knocks you off. What's that Ric Flair saying? If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. So if anybody wants to be the champs, it goes through Arrowhead, plain and simple. So but I, you got to beat it. You got to beat them in January. Yeah, January, yeah. February. <clears throat> Beating us in October doesn't mean anything. Um, Very true. But as long as fifteen stays upright and healthy, we're always going to be a contender. Okay, now. The AFC West is a cloudy ass picture once you move the Kansas City Chiefs out of the equation. The Chargers, the Raiders, and the Broncos are all two and two. Which one of these teams is a contender and which one is a pretender? I would say out of those three, the only contender possible, but I would rank them all three pretenders. But the only one that could possibly get out of that would be the Chargers. The Raiders and the Broncos are. Not good. Okay. All right. So that's the AFC. Let's take a look at the NFC and you tell me these. The Washington Commanders, you know, that team that was the doormat in that division is sitting on top at three and one. Contender or pretender? I'm going to say uh, contender. Um, the one thing that I that you know i talked about it last year too nfc east it's been like 10 or 12 or 13 years since they've had a back-to-back -back division champ right so i think the year before was philly last year was dallas so it's it's gonna be washington or new york's turn it just is and they just seem to be the better out of all three teams i think they're the best in the nfc east so definitely or contender and i think they'll win the division mm. Um, I would agree with that. This one here, I'm going to tell you already, I, I'm going to say pretender. Cowboys, two and two. 
to make the playoffs. Yeah. I say contender. I think the Eagles will jump them to the playoffs. I mean, they're both sitting at two and two right now, but Dallas, even though they won two games, they haven't really shown me anything out of those two wins. And when they get behind, they just seem to struggle. What did the Eagles show you in their two wins? They showed a exactly. little fight. Nothing. They showed a little fight. No, they didn't. They did not. You didn't watch another game. Shut up. They showed some fight. They did. They showed some fight. They did not. They both suck. Oh, they they and, made. and with the Philadelphia team, they're kind of like uh, they're kind of like the Jets. They they have coach quarterback issues. People are infighting. Um, juries. Both of their receivers are injured. They're missing Jason Kelsey, uh, Saquon Barkley. So, I mean, they, it, it's, yeah. On paper, they're great. In real life, I'd say contender. I mean, pretender. Okay. In the NFC North, the Vikings are 4-0. and Pretender. Really? Yeah. I mean, I agree with you, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you why right now. The Lions are three and one. I say they're contenders, and th they're gonna rise up when once that division starts division play. I mean, real division play. I know the Vikings just knocked off the Packers, but let's face it. By the skin of their teeth. Yeah. So I'm gonna say the Lions are a contender, and I'm gonna say the Vikings are a pretender. I agree, and the Packers are also a contender. Now, I think the Packers and the Lions will be um, in the hunt for that division. Now, the Bears are also 2-2 two and two in that division. Caleb Williams is not the quarterback that they think he is. So, I would say pretender. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I would go as far as to say, if there was ever a team that you could consider to be a Jekyll and Hyde team to look decent one minute, and just stink up the joint the next, it's the Bears. On defense, they they look unstoppable. You get them on offense, at, they can't even get times. a first down. Yeah, at times. Yeah, I, they're, they're a team that definitely plays down or plays up to their competition. Yeah. Um, In the NFC South, you got the Buccaneers at 3-1. and one. Man, they've looked really good. They've looked really good. I would say contender. Okay. Falcons at two and two and the Saints at two and two. I would probably link the Saints as a contender and the Falcons. And the Falcons aren't bad either. Um, I'm going to say they're all three contenders. I would probably agree with that. And uh, winding it down with the NFC West. The Seahawks are three and one contender or pretender. Man, the Seahawks look really good. Like they played the Lions last night really good until the Lions were able to to pull away in the last yeah. five or six minutes of that game. Uh, I mean, because it was touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. You know, either team was trading punches. So I would say Seattle is a contender. Okay. The 49ers are two and two. Contender or pretender? They're they've been the beast of the NFC for the last few years, so contender until somebody proves me wrong. I would agree. Unfortunately, we won't be talking about the Cardinals or the Rams because they are both one and three, so they got some work to do. But that leads me into uh, Week Five in the NFL, and um, I want to go over these with you to get your picks. And, um, you know, like a dummy, I don't have our previous picks with me. I'll have to pull those out later. But uh, it's no secret if you've been watching the show, we suck. So this has got to be redemption week. <laughs> this has got to be redemption Speak week. Speak for yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thursday night, those Buccaneers, those sneaky Buccaneers are at the Falcons. I'm gonna go. With... I'm picking Buck. Really? You're picking the Bucks? I'm picking the Falcons. I'm gonna go with the Falcons yeah. on this. Uh, 
Then we have a Sunday game in the Why? morning. Huh? No, go back. Why? Why? Why are you picking the Falcons over the Bucks? Just because it'd be different, so you can catch up or get no. ahead more ahead of me. Yeah, I'm I'm ahead, but not by much. Um, here's the thing. Whenever I'm like just stuck, I just default to the home team, and that's the only reason why I'm doing this. Because the Falcons, if this was in Tampa, I would go with Tampa. Now I know that this will not come out until Thursday. Mm-hmm. So, but I just finished watching it. The Royals just won their first playoff game. They're up 1-0 against Baltimore. Way to go, Royals. Way to go, Royals. That's what I'm talking about. That October magic done started, all right? Uh, Where were we? Oh, yeah. Sunday morning, we have a morning game. Uh, is this overseas, the Jets versus the Vikings? It It is. It's in Britain, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely going with Vikings on this. See, it'd be different if it was in the States because they both have to fly over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know what? Because you picked the Falcons and I picked the Bucks, I'm going to pick the Jets just so we can both be one and one after these two games. Wow. Okay. All right. And at noon, once we're all awake, back from church, eat good, uh, the Panthers are at the Bears. This is the toilet bowl. By default, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with the Bears. I actually think this is going to be a highly competitive game. Mm. Um, the Panthers really played the Bengals very well and almost beat them. Mm-hmm. I'm going Panthers. Okay. Okay. Um, Ravens at the Bengals. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Ravens. This one is a tough one for me. This is a division game. I'll probably stick. Man, we're we're just going to be different on all four games so far. I'm going (laughs) Cincinnati. Okay. Um, Miami is at New England. I am going to go with New England. I am also going to go with New England. All right. The Colts are at the Jaguars. And the Jaguars are desperately trying to keep from going 0-5. And I think they will finally get in the win column in week six. Because I'm going with the Colts. (laughs) So, Joe Flacco is quarterbacking the Colts. Mm -hmm. Who I think is better option than Anthony Richardson. So, I think they're going to be better for it. He came in because Anthony Richard, I think, hurt his hip. Yeah. He came in and did well last week. The Jaguars are just tripping over themselves. But, man, I don't see them losing this game. I'm going Jags for the upset. Wow, we keep on being different. I think the New England game is the only one that we have the same so far. Oh, the Vikings too. All right. This this is where we should no, start. No, I picked I picked the Jets. Yeah, you did pick the Jets. You sure did. Um hey, we've got the Bills and the Texans. I'm gonna go I with the team in red, white, and blue. The team in red, white, and blue is gonna win. I don't even want to pick this game. I'm going to go with the Bills. Just a hunch. If it was at Buffalo, I'd probably agree with you. Man, that that, that one, this is a tough one for me. I think Buffalo's pride got hurt Sunday night, and they need to go in and score. Score like they know how, not this crap. Right, but Houston also needs to be Buffalo to stay up above them in the playoff hunt, you know, seeding wise. It'd be a True. great whoever gives this is gonna have a great head to head advantage. But 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to go with what you say when it's just so hard, you just default to the home team. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Houston. Okay. So we're going to put the Texans down, the Bills for me. My One beloved of us is Raiders. going to be really good next week or really bad. <laughs> My beloved Raiders are at the Broncos. And I, I'm going to say that this eight-game streak comes to an end. It's if it, if it was in Vegas, I'd go with the Raiders. My heart wants to say Raiders, but my head is saying the Broncos are going to win this game, so I'm going to go with Denver. Really? Las what? Vegas. You, oh, wow. Las Vegas. Okay. I mean. Hold on for a second. I got to check something. Here's my main reason. Hold on. Somebody's talking some bullshit. One, Somebody just put uh, Devontae Adams to the Chiefs. Go Chiefs! In my feet. Once, here. once we, once we log. I mean, once, once you say who you're picking, we shouldn't be able to change it. You know what I mean? But the, my main reason is yes, the Broncos beat the Jets last week, but Bo Nix's only threw for sixty yards and had a touchdown. That was it. <laughs> so that's why I'm picking the Raiders. You know what? Not very many times do I fall within your logic because I'm all mixed up. But I can't do this to my team. I can't. If I'm going to go down, I'm going down with the sinking ship. I am changing my pick. I'm going with Vegas. Back to reality, Ricky. Okay. Arizona Cardinals are at the 49ers. I think it's going to be more competitive than we think, but San Francisco is going to win. I'm going to go with the 49ers as well. Packers at the Rams. Ooh, this is ugly. I'm going, uh, Not really for me. I'm going with Green Bay. I think I'm going to go with Green Bay as well. Um, I, I'm saying it's ugly because of the Rams. They How the mighty have fallen. Um. The Giants at the Seahawks. I'm going Seahawks. Same. Cowboys at the Steelers. Here's the enigma. I, 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 from what I'm seeing here. Just mark me down for Pittsburgh. Really? Okay. Tell me why. And by the way, I'm going with Pittsburgh uh, as well. Couple reasons. One, it's in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Um, their defense is really good. Those are my uh, reasons. Justin Justin Fields is playing pretty decent. Micah Parsons won't be playing; he's injured. So I just think they'll be short that pass rush, and they'll win by you know a field goal or whatever. I I think T.J. Watt's going to be all over Dak Prescott. I really do. I, I really wouldn't surprise me at all. All right, and uh, since that's the Sunday night game, we're closing it out Monday. Did night. we do? Did we do Washington Cleveland? Uh, no, we did not. So we do need Washington and Cleveland. I'm sorry, Washington. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Washington as well because it's in Washington. And uh, Cleveland just got beat by the Raiders. Yeah, Not but if you're I'm only on my team, but if you're only picking them because they're in Washington, you haven't paid attention to Washington. No, Washington puts up numbers. I think they're going to score a lot on the. I, I, I'm. I would go as far as say it'd be like a 27-13 game in favor of Washington. It's not going to be. It's not going to be close. Washington will pull away no. in the fourth quarter. I agree. 
All right, now we get to the Monday night game. Uh, New Orleans Saints is at the Kansas City Chiefs. It is a Monday night game for the Chiefs, nationally televised. There's no way in hell that I think the Chiefs will lose this game. Well, diehard Chiefs fan here. I will be rooting for Kansas City to win, but I am picking the Saints for the upset. Whoa. Wow. This I, I got to hear. That, I think this is the week where the lackluster play, uh, uh, the injuries, and the bad decision-making by Patrick Mahomes comes back to bite us in the ass. Mm. I think I think the Saints are very fast on offense. Uh, Derek Carr is playing above his pay grade. Um, you know, but with their receivers, with Alvin Kamara, I just see them. I I see it being kind of like the Detroit Kansas City game last year. That's kind of what how I see this. Okay. I can't. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because, you know, the next week we have a bye. So I would love to go into the bye being undefeated. But I, I, I just, something tells me, my gut feeling tells me that we're going to get nipped. I can see that. I can see it. I'm I'm still gonna stick with Kansas City, but um yeah, I, I get that. Uh and you I make no secret, I've been rooting for DC once he got shipped off to New Orleans because of the way McDouchebag did him. Because, you know, he, he might be slightly above average to you, but you take Gardner Minshew off the Raiders, and you if we still had Carr, I'm not going to say we'd be 4-0, but we'd probably be 3-1, and not 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, you would definitely be better off in the long run with Carr. Yeah. Carr is above average to average quarterback. He is. That's just what he is. He hasn't won anything. But he the, is the knock on him is, is always Derek Carr is Alex Smith. I I I can see that. I can see that. You know, you can win with him, but you're probably not gonna. Um, Just saying. I I I can agree with that hundred percent. The knock on him always was if he had any kind of defense, he he'd be good. Saints have a better defense than the Raiders did uh, when he was the Raider. So this is his chance to prove it. Uh, eight and eight. He's just making we'll really good decisions. He's he's making really good decisions. I've watched most of the Saints games just because, you know, I have the Sunday ticket, so I watch like eight games at once. But I, I he, he makes really, really good decisions. Yeah, I mean, technically they should have won last week, but I think it was Shahid. That made the uh, that that dropped the uh, the kick uh, punt. No, they were they were ahead, and they went up with one point. They went up, but they gave too much time to Atlanta. Atlanta marched down, kicked field goal, and won. Hmm. I mean, it's just you know, it's they came back to to jump ahead. They just didn't keep the ball long enough. They actually scored too early. Yeah, gave Carr like I think a minute forty five. And then Sung Kuku, I think he kicked like a ninety-five yard field goal. I mean, it was it was retarded. Yeah, that 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 dude's got a leg, and um, we really. I'm gonna extend football talk out just a little bit because I'm noticing a lot more kickers are hitting them accurate from beyond the fifty, going towards sixty yards, um, which yes. is a testament to kickers nowadays. But I've seen a lot of misses this past Sunday, too. So I'm not going to give I think, too much props. I think that's also to the rules of how 
the linemen can't jump over the line like they used to be able to, you know, to try to to block the kicks, you know. And so they're able to kick that lower trajectory, trajectory kick to make it work. Yeah. Um I, I'm I'm really hoping that week five is very exciting, especially for me. I need to get them numbers right. back up. Because we're either gonna suck. <laughs> right. One of us is gonna suck really bad. Or or here's what's gonna happen. Half the games that we pick different, I'll win, and the other half you'll lose you'll win. So we'll still suck. So Right. We're in this quicksand what's together. What's going to happen is the games that we pick separately, one of us is going to win, one of us is going to lose. But the games that we pick together, we're both going to lose. So somebody's going to be really pissed off next week. That will suck. All right. Before we get out of here, we we, we you know we promised a couple weeks ago that we'd get back on the Game of Thrones thing. Mm-hmm. Um, season 7. As we wind it down, we got two more seasons left, seven and eight. I, I'm going to say seven was one of the better seasons. Uh, still might not rank up there with five or six, but it was it, it's close. It definitely wasn't a stinker like eight, and we'll get to eight next week. But um, I, I think the story was moving along pretty well. I think that... Uh, there was a lot of focus on things that uh, were had you asking questions every week for several weeks. Um, yes. Let me see. Yeah. Daenerys did arrive in Westeros with her army and her three dragons. That's where it all went to hell after that for her. Um, and well, John not had, yet. No, not yet, but that was the beginning of the end. Uh, John left Sansa in charge of Winterfell and he went uh, with uh, Daenerys to uh, secure her help to defeat the White Walkers. So, no, was he this... went to ask for her help. Yeah, th yeah, that's right. Because wasn't it season? They don't eight? actually fight until season eight. Yeah, mm -hmm. season eight's when they're asking everybody to band together, though, right? Or was it season seven? When no, they're... that's that's still set. That's still the end of seven. Okay. When they get back, it might be the beginning of eight. Okay, that's right. Because, um, at, at this I point, think, I think this is where you, I mean this. I'm pretty sure that this is where you where uh, I Ira Ira she gets all of her revenge in this season. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, that's right. Cause Sam borrowed the, uh, and I'll use the term borrow loosely the book in the library where he's, uh, learning, uh, the, uh, it was the restricted book, wasn't it? To be a maester. Yeah. Yeah. Now this ain't Harry Potter. He wasn't in the restricted section, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was, he, he found a book to help them. Had what was it called? Uh, I don't know the name of it. Him was able to heal him. Yeah. So that was uh, that was pretty decent. Um, I believe this is also no, this was not it because Stannis is already gone. <clears throat> um, this is also the season where Cersei got all her revenge from the Sept. You know where? Yes, yeah. Everybody that that she's promised to pay back, she would. She she got uh, uh, the the Sand Vipers that killed her daughter. She was able to kill the mother and one of her daughters. Uh, she she made the connection with Balin Greyjoy, not Balin. Um, ah, what is his name? Anyway, I know who you're talking uh, about. The, un the uncle, the uncle. Uh, yeah, because he had, he had taken control of the Iron Fleet. 
Mm -hmm. And yep. he's the one that killed the Sand Viper's first two daughters and then took the mother and remaining daughter to Cersei. And she basically kissed the daughter with the same poison uh, that Marcelo was killed with, but then basically told the mom, you get to watch her die and then we're going to keep you alive so you can see her corpse rot. And yeah, she was evil. And then, you know, that nun chick, she had the mountain with his demonic self rape her over and over, you know, kill I her. I do finally. remember that. Cause um, as she was walking out the door, what was she saying to her? Uh, shame. Yeah. Shame. Uh, that was cold. Um, then, you know, this season also boils down to, uh, uh, you know, Targaryen or Daenerys joining up with John. John wanting to mine dragon glass. Um, hey, we are up against it. So what I want to do is I'm a little different. Uh, next week, mm -hmm. we're just going to devote more time to G Game of Thrones. We're going to finish season seven and go into season eight and reasons why I don't like the way it ended. Okay. So we're going to do like that. Okay, now, gang, due to time constraints, we are going to pick this back up uh, next week because we want to expand on it, and we're going to go into the final season as well. So make sure that you uh, stay tuned. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe on whatever feed you're on, whether it's podcast feed or the YouTube feed, and uh, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. We will be back, and we appreciate you. Stay positive, stay blessed. We'll see you again.